Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to clear up a little confusion that, uh, well, it's been a confusion for a while and certainly patients have brought it to my attention for a long time. I've seen it on the internet quite a bit. And that is, what's the difference between glutamate, like in monosodium glutamate, MSG, and gluten? They kind of sound alike and quite frankly in the past I've said there is no relationship. They're entirely different. Well, as we find in clinical nutrition, you have to be willing to change, you have to be willing to learn new things, and I certainly am, and so I want to pass it along. It turns out, uh, we've always known that gluten or gliadin breaks down into two different main amino acids. Amino acids, you might remember, are the building blocks of proteins, so most of our body is protein, most of our cells are. Um, Certainly there's a lot of water and other things, but, but the, the structural parts of our body are protein. And so we have these amino acids or building blocks of protein. And uh, I don't want to use a lot of words that are confusing, uh, but one of these amino acids is um, glutamine. And it breaks down in the small intestine to glutamate. Now, is glutamate the same thing as monosodium glutamate? No, it's taking an amino acid and actually making a salt out of it. But here's my point, is that there is a neurological thread here as far as creating neurological problems and neurological disease. And that's what I want to discuss. So uh, diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ataxia where you don't have good balance uh, of your body, seizures, migraines, there's a lot of neurological diseases and what we know is that 30 to 50 percent, so up to half of the people that suffer from a gluten problem have a neurological problem. So we can see that nervous system and we've known this is very well, or not well as in good, but majorly affected by gluten. So we've known that, but here's what we've learned is that Glutamate is not only found in monosodium glutamate. It's found when this protein gliadin breaks down, that uh, glutamine I told you about that breaks down into glutamate in the small intestine. That's where it majorly happens is the small intestine. In the past, we've talked about the fact that gluten creates a leaky gut meaning partially digested products leave that gut, get out into the blood circulation and go to other parts of the body, creating problems. And the other issue is that glutamate, not just found in monosodium glutamate, where people who know they're sensitive to it look for that in the ingredient list, but something called free glutamate. So in the bound form, it's not a problem, but when it's freed up, Glutamate is known to be what's called uh, an excitotoxin or neurotoxin. Now when you take the word excited, well that sounds fun and happy, but an excited toxin, not so good. As a matter of fact, an excitotoxin is known to create damage to the brain and nervous system in addition to causing cellular death in the brain and nervous system. So excitotoxins are a very serious thing that we want to avoid. So. We certainly know about gluten. We know that we want to find out if we're sensitive to it or not. If we are, we can definitely avoid neurological disease that way. We also want to know if we're sensitive to glutamate. If you react poorly to monosodium glutamate, there's a clue right there. So where are these free glutamates found? They're found in high protein foods, like meats and dairy products, things like that, that have been overly processed or cooked for a long period of time. So uh, if you think about uh, sausages and uh, frankfurters and or hot dogs and uh, the kind of foods that you get at fast food restaurants, uh, all these types of foods that are heavily processed and or cooked for a very long period of time will free up that glutamate to make it available again and that's when it can create problems. If you do an internet search on free glutamate, uh, you'll find a, a long list of foods, ultra pasteurized dairy products, Parmesan cheese. So there, there's a list there, but they're not really what I would consider healthy foods anyway. So if you follow what, what I recommend as far as uh, very fresh and organic fruits and vegetables, a lot of plant-based foods, etc., uh, you're unlikely to 
really run into a lot of free, free glutamates anyway, but it's important to know where you stand with them because most recently uh, a patient who knows she's sensitive to MSG uh, felt poorly, was wondering if she somehow got into gluten, she's also sensitive to gluten, and after we really sat down and looked at it, she had used a chicken broth. She would made a risotto dish at home. She was trying to be, be good and, and she uh, cooked at home and all of that. Uh, but the chicken broth she used, when we looked it up, had that free glutamate in it. Even though the can said no added MSG. So we want to make that distinction between adding monosodium glutamate as an ingredient and actually cooking or processing a food such that you release the free glutamate. So it's different, but unfortunately the end product is the same, which is this free glutamate, which is an excitotoxin and it's creating damage to the nervous system. Also in the recent research that uh, I was exposed to, uh, chronic infections are a source of stress to the nervous system and toxins, pesticides. We've kind of known that. Uh, we talk about it in our book, the gluten effect, how you have to look for the secondary effects like infections and toxins and really remove those from the system in order to get full healing. But what we have learned that's very key is that each of these things I've talked about, gluten, free glutamate, chronic infections, pesticides, toxins, each one of them kind of intermingle. So what I mean is that if, for an example, uh, a child ate gluten and was sensitive, they kind of primed up the immune system of the brain and uh, nervous system. So it got primed by that first attack of something that it didn't like. Then subsequent attacks can happen not just from gluten, certainly more gluten will do it, but a free glutamate or a vaccination that can contained a toxin that the body had to react to, uh, getting a mercury filling in, in a tooth or, or a vaccination that had mercury in it, etc. So what we found is that there is an accrual of all of these different factors, even though they're different factors as far as the immune system of the brain and nervous system is concerned, it's really just more of a toxin. And as subsequent reactions happen, a greater response happens from that immune system in a bad way, creating more and more damage. So these diseases that we're talking about that are affecting the nervous system have this common thread that we really need to kind of tease out and see if it's a contributing factor in your, your own neurological disease um, or someone you care about, a family member or friend. Now the exciting thing is of course how to protect our nervous system so that we don't develop these problems or can hopefully back out of them if they haven't been present for too long. And that's where, of course, identifying a gluten problem is, is number one, identifying a glutamate problem number two, although, as I said, those foods are not particularly healthy for us anyway, identifying an infection and, and handling that toxins, heavy metals, all of those certainly have to be removed from the system. But what was exciting in addition to that is knowing what nutritional types of things are neuroprotective, what makes that immune system of the nervous system and brain stronger, more resilient, better able to fend off these problems. And it comes back to, you know, one of our favorite things to eat, which is organic fruits and vegetables with all those wonderful antioxidants and flavonoids and phytonutrients and they're all long names but it comes down to those beautiful raspberries and blueberries and cranberries and and all those dark green leafy vegetables that are so chock full of these antioxidants that they literally act as neuroprotectors. So exciting research, I wrote about it more in my blog if you want to visit um, glutendoctors.blogspot.com. Can't get too technical in a few minutes, but I really wanted to share this because I've been asked so many times over the years, is there, is there a correlation be, between gluten and glutamate? And I always said no, and I was wrong, so I wanted to uh, set it straight now that we have this uh, new research that has come about. So until next time, I wish you very good health.